Hello, and welcome to Your Sparkly Brand. We're here to inspire and empower entrepreneurs like you. This podcast is all about delivering no fluff, high value content that helps you grow your business. It doesn't matter if you have no budget and are still DIYing everything on your own. We're giving you the tips, tools, and strategies you need to build a sparkly empire. I'm Lauren Tassi, your copywriter and launch strategist, and I'm joined by my co-host, marketing and branding expert, Megan Gersh. Hi, Megan. Hello. I am so excited to introduce you to our guest today, Steph Pinsley. Steph is a Cornell alum and an ex-Googler who has turned to be a coach and a speaker. She's committed to helping natural born leaders get unstuck from unfulfilling careers or futile job searches. And she helps you to build confidence. She helps you to create clarity and attract aligned opportunities through an unexpected but a powerful approach by developing your personal brand. So welcome to the podcast, Steph. So excited to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to chat with you guys for a while because I've seen your podcast and it's been great. So I'm so excited to be on. Yay. Well, welcome. Before we jump into your story, we like to start each episode with our sparkly moment of the week. It's like a little win or a celebration, something that makes you feel sparkly. So Meg, do you have one? What was yours? Absolutely. So I mentioned this on the last podcast, but I've been working with this client. It's a shapewear client on a website redesign and super excited with how the design has been going. And I just got the first round of feedback from the client and she's in love with the website redesign. So I that just makes me always just that's like the best feeling ever yay what about you you know what mine is like I don't know it's a little sad but I was just I was thinking about this today like there's some people I know that are like so smart and so employable but like the job market right now is so tough and it's just like really hard to kind of watch some of these people that I'm close to go through this and this struggle but it makes me so grateful to like have a business and be in charge of all of that and not have to nobody's gonna lay me off if I you know if I have a slow week then I just gotta go out and do some more legwork you know it's kind of sad, but a little sparkly too. It's funny. I w- I laughed a bit because mine is sort of a, a backward sparkly moment. <laughs> so I recently started a new video series where I'm interviewing people and I realized how difficult that is. And so I'll watch back some episodes where I am interviewing someone and I'm like, I hated that. I'm like, I shouldn't have done this. I should have done that. But I'm learning how to just be kinder to myself and realize that I'm just a beginner. This is all part of the process. So I am grateful that I'm learning to be kinder to myself because as like a lifelong high achiever perfectionist that's not how I would have reacted in the past so we're growing yeah yeah that is definitely a sparkly moment all right so let's get into your story Steph why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey how did you get to where you are today how did you become a personal branding coach so I'll start I guess from college when I graduated so I graduated in 2017 and I ended up applying to the Google APMM program this stands for associate product marketing manager I didn't want to apply because I was like, first of all, it's on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. I'm not going to get in. But my friend Lawrence just convinced me to. And so, you know, I ended up getting in, which was exciting. It was definitely a very big win for me. And so I started out on the Google Assistant brand team, which was a really cool experience. I had sort of like a tumultuous start with my boss. And I can get into that, but I won't I won't go into too much detail on that. So I had a rough start, but I ended up getting to launch one of Google's most popular ad campaigns of all time, which was the Home Loan Google Assistant campaign. So that really turned my experience around and I ended up rotating to another team. Loved the boss, great experience. But you know, eventually COVID came, I moved back home. I ended up having to change teams again because my team got deprioritized. And so I moved to another team, great boss, great people, but the work really didn't resonate with me. I was super bored with it. I have ADHD. So working on something that I don't find interesting takes a significant toll on me. So in August of 2020, I ended up having to take a leave of absence because my mental and physical health were just at an all-time low and that was a really abrupt pause for me where I kind of felt like my whole sort of like career plan had fallen apart and that was a that was a tough time for sure and during that time I was looking for sort of a creative outlet you know I'm on leave I'm not feeling fulfilled at my job so I have this you know opportunity I saw TikTok you know growing some people creating audiences there and so I just started sharing content on marketing branding mindset and I started growing an audience and building my personal brand and gaining really good feedback and so throughout that experience and seeing the different opportunities that were created from that and the transformation that it had on my life I decided that I wanted to now coach people on building a personal brand and so I ended up quitting my job at Google in February of 2021 I hired a coach I worked on building out a group coaching program and all about how to build your personal brand and that was going really well for a while I was focusing on marketing and branding but recently actually I've pivoted into more of this 
territory around getting unstuck with personal branding rather than, you know, through the lens of just, you know, grow a personal brand to grow your business. And so while I am still working on personal brand coaching, the sort of intention has evolved a bit, but that's a bit of the the shortened version. I could definitely dive into some of those if, if, if you guys want. I'm glad you brought up the the pivot because that's something that I definitely noticed in your content, like that ha- that you've been really leaning into lately of the unstuck kind of, I don't want to call it an angle, but like for lack of a better word, an angle for like approaching personal branding. Is there a reason that you pivoted that way? Is that something that you were experiencing in your own business? Or is that something that like maybe one of your clients was experiencing? How did you decide to make that pivot? So after I had worked with enough clients and sort of seen the transformations, I started to become awake to the fact like I had a bit of an epiphany sort of that personal branding can help you get unstuck. However, I didn't have that full light bulb moment until I had another moment in my career where I felt stuck in marketing. So this was this year, I wasn't feeling super excited about it. I wasn't, you know, getting a ton of clients because I just, my heart really wasn't in it. And so I hired a business coach and we sort of worked through like, what is my core message? What is the impact I want to make? And I came to this realization. I crystallized this idea in my head that I've not always, but I'm starting to understand that personal branding can be a great vehicle to get unstuck, but I didn't put it all together. And then through working with that coach, Jay Kunzo, he's incredible. I was able to come to this you know, conclusion and also reflecting on all of the experiences with my clients that have built personal brands and just seeing other people in my audience and seeing the transformations they had gone through. And that was something I felt way more passionate about because while I love marketing and I've been doing marketing for years, this felt more meaningful to me because I was stuck more than once. And content creation, personal branding was such an important way for me to get out of that and discover a lot more about myself, magnetize myself for opportunities. And so I'm really happy that I get to still work on this sort of marketing branding stuff, which I feel like I have a lot of experience in and and credibility in. But I now get to do it in a way that is through a lens of more so helping people deal with burnout and on top of just the personal branding stuff, really diving into the mindset stuff as well, which I'm so passionate about. So that's really why I transitioned. But like I said, it wasn't like an obvious pivot right away. Let's backtrack a little bit too, because I'm curious about your time at Google. Are there lessons that you took from that experience and also lessons that you've learned since you have quit your job? Yeah, so I think the number one lesson I learned is just because you are in a great company and you are having this you know, external success that looks great to everyone on the outside, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be right for you. That doesn't mean it's gonna make you happy. And I just sort of assumed that when I got this job, like I had hit the lottery, like this was, it was like the easiest sort of like career move for me. I'm like, wow, I got my career figured out. Now it's just smooth sailing from here. But I realized that that just wasn't the case and that I didn't know enough about myself. I lived my whole life for other people and for others validation. And so I lost touch with myself. I lost touch with what I really wanted from a career, what I really valued, you know, what was my work style? What were my superpowers? I realized that I never got a chance to really discover that. And a lot of us don't because we'll choose a career based on a major that we picked usually before our brains have have even finished developing. And so we don't get a lot of opportunities to explore and experiment and learn about ourselves, which your 20s, I think is what is all about, right? So getting that, getting acquainted with myself again and understanding that just because, you know, I may, you know, have a great salary, great benefits, that doesn't mean that that's going to give me that long-term fulfillment. And so that was the biggest realization for me is just that you really need to listen to your own intuition and forget what about what you should be doing because what you should be doing is not based on your own, you know, desires and, and values. It's based on someone else's agenda. And I, I realized how much I had been living my life for other people and how that had really deep deeply impacted me in my career. I love, I feel like the the main theme I'm picking up on, like with you, your personality and your story is this like needing to be lit up by what you do, right? It's why you're pivoting. It's why that job wasn't fulfilling anymore. And I think that's so like, we all need to hear that so often that like, we should be excited about what we're doing. And if you're not excited, it's probably not the right thing. So I love that part of your story. Yeah, it's funny you say that because this was something I was speaking with one of my guests on for Project Unstuck. 
and we were talking about, you know, how do you figure out what is best for you? And one of the simplest ways is just like move towards what feels good, what feels easiest, what feels the most flowy, what not that you're not going to have challenges, you will. But when you are aligned with the path that is, you know, that's better for you, that's meant for you, things will start feeling a lot easier. And that's what I experienced. And I think that's a great clue for anyone that's a little bit stuck is, you know, what actually feels good to you? What do you enjoy? Yeah. So let's talk about it. What, what does the word stuck mean? Like, how do we get stuck? How do we get unstuck? What, what's your take on all that? I'm glad you asked that because I really believe that stuck is such a misnomer. We think of stuck as stagnant and being still not taking action. And that is the case a lot of times for many people, but more often I found that stuck looks a lot more like sort of thrashing. So we're taking action, we're moving, but we're not progressing because the actions that we're taking are not necessarily coming from a place of clarity on ourselves and what we want and need. And so as we thrash and we try to sort of get unstuck, we almost sink, step into a sink like quicksand, a sinkhole of stuckness. And as we continue to take these erratic movements, we get more and more stuck. We often don't even know we're stuck because again, we don't necessarily always think of stuck as moving, but not seeing progress. So I came to that realization that, okay, stuck does not necessarily mean stagnant, but stuck can mean that I don't know exactly where I want to go. I don't know what really lights my heart up. And so I'm going to do the thing where I apply to a hundred different places, or I create all the content. I do things that feel productive. I'm tricking myself, you know, I'm getting through my inbox, but because I'm taking all this action, but I'm not seeing progress. Now I've drained my energy, my confidence, my motivation, my inspiration to change. And so now that's why I think you get even more stuck. You're falling into this quicksand. And so just like getting unstuck from quicksand, you want to move slowly and with intention as opposed to this thrashing thing that I was talking about. And so that's, I think, really the distinction between, you know, what it, or not the distinction, but I think that's how I look at being stuck. And again, I think that's another reason why a lot of people may not even identify this stuckness in themselves because it's not showing up as, you know, complete stagnancy. So the next natural question is like, how do you have any tips for becoming unstuck? Yes. And this is really why I believe that personal branding is such a great vehicle to get unstuck because I've, I've come to realize that getting unstuck really is a matter of these three ingredients that we need. The first one is confidence and just a strong mindset. The second is clarity, you know, personal clarity on our values, our desires, et cetera. And then the last are new opportunities that are aligned with our career sweet spot, which is very similar to the, I think it's a Japanese concept called Ikigai. I could be so wrong. I recently heard about that. I'm like, oh, that's exactly how, what I was sort of in, trying to explain in my own way. But I look at a career sweet spot as just the intersection between what you enjoy, what matters to you, what you're good at, and what people will pay you for. And so new opportunities that are aligned with our career sweet spot is that third ingredient that we need. Personal branding can be a great way to get unstuck for several reasons. The first is when we're trying to build a personal brand, we have to first, at least at my program, lay a strong foundation and really understand what are the limiting beliefs that are getting in my way. Because if you're not dealing with all that mind gunk, those fears, not necessarily all of it, but a lot of it, you're not going to be able to consistently show up authentically. And so a lot of the work that I do in that first module is really looking at identifying the fears, identifying the limiting beliefs, figuring out where they came from, and then working to rewire them. So we're starting to build that confidence and confidence comes in another way, which I'll talk about in a moment. Clarity comes in a few ways. The first is that when you're building a personal brand, you first need to understand what is my niche? What is this sort of like area, the slice of the market that I want to own? And in, in defining your niche, you go through these exercises that give you clarity. You're forced to kind of look at, you know, what what do I really like? What do I really enjoy? And you come to this conclusion about, okay, this is actually something that would give me a lot of fulfillment. So that gives you a lot of clarity. You also get clarity similarly from the brand identity exercises, because when you build a brand, you also have to go through these brand identity exercises. And, And Megan, I'm sure you're very familiar with what I'm talking about. You have to go through the exercises to uncover, you know, what is my purpose? What are my values? And then the other way that we're gaining clarity is in the step around creating content. Personal branding is really distilled to like do just creating high value content in a niche. As I'm creating content, I'm using social media as like a testing ground, essentially to explore and experiment with some lesser 
explored passions and interests because like I said, we often don't get that chance to discover that early in our careers or sometimes ever. And so that is really where you can start to gain more clarity. Opportunities come from content creation. High value content creation in a niche will magnetize you for all sorts of opportunities, whether that be, you know, brand deals or job offers or clients or, you know, media features, press, speaking gigs, business partners, it really anything. And you won't even think of these opportunities ahead of time, you wouldn't even think of them had they not been presented to you first. So not only is this helping you to gain these, you know, opportunities to get unstuck, but these opportunities almost act as breadcrumbs and give you even more clarity about what is my most fulfilling and aligned path. So they act as both clues and advancements towards that most aligned and fulfilling path. And then the last thing I'll say in terms of content creation and how that contributes to confidence, when you are sharing your personal story, you're adding value in a niche and you're starting to, you will get messages messages from your audience that are thanking you for the impact that you're making on their lives. And this was a, a big life all moment for me in my create content creation journey, especially on leave. I had not felt that kind of fulfillment at all, you know, up until I started creating, adding value. And I saw messages about the impacts that I was having and that filled my cup like nothing else could. And so that again, can really be a great way to gain that confidence. So confidence, clarity, and opportunities come in multiple ways throughout the process. But I think the main drivers are really probably content creation. Do you think there's any market industry niche where like personal branding shouldn't be done or where it can't be helpful? Like, is there, I'm, I'm curious, cause this is something I, we talk about it. Like I've always thought about it. What's your take? I honestly think a personal brand is helpful in any niche for anyone. I think it can only really support you unless maybe you're in like a very like high profile thing and you can't sort of build up online presence. Building an online presence and growing your authority in a specific niche and becoming known for something and gaining that credibility and, and you know positioning yourself as a thought leader can only kind of expand the surface area for you to fall on and gain this kind of luck and these new opportunities and again the clarity. So I can't say that I can think of anyone like that stands out that wouldn't benefit but rather that I think that really anyone could benefit, whether you're in a nine to five or in your own business, because again, you attract whether that's job offers or you know business partners, clients, et cetera. Let's talk a bit about like, how can you start to monetize a personal brand? There's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to monetize a personal brand. The most obvious one that a lot of people think of, which is not necessarily like everyone's favorite way or the best way to do it, brand deals. Brand deals are an easy, obvious way to get to monetize, but you don't necessarily have to do brand deals to make money. You can, if you are positioning yourself as an expert, as an educator, you can use your personal brand as a launch pad for whatever new products or services, or even like a podcast that you want to launch. One of the guests that I had on Project Unstuck, Dolma Alton, she just launched a podcast and she had built a personal brand on TikTok. And I had asked her like, do you think that helped you? Do you think that helped you be more successful? And she's like, oh, absolutely. And so it can really elevate the success of, you know, any sort of entrepreneurial endeavor or even even again, the nine to five job search, but that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about monetization. And so you can monetize by creating courses or selling digital products or, you know, launching a business, because again, the personal brand acts as that launch pad to elevate the success of whatever you are choosing to do. There's probably a bunch of other ways, Megan, I'm sure I'm missing some, you, you know, you know, you've built your personal brand, but yeah, what else is there that I'm missing? Speaking engagements or like yep. workshop opportunities or, you know, just brands hiring you to to come in and teach their people things, which like, yep. I, I never thought when I started creating TikTok content that that would be something that came my way. But like, I just recently finished up a three workshop sprint with Pike Place Market. And I was like, they reached out to me. I was like, is this real? Like what? Yeah, see, there's so many different ways that you can monetize. What you don't wanna do is build a personal brand and then try to monetize it in too many different ways. I would really start with just one product or service and really double down on that because the mistake that I've made and I I've seen other people make is that we try to launch too many things off the personal brand and then our message gets a little diluted and so it becomes difficult to really gain a lot of traction in any one of those things so what's the connection between personal branding and developing your entrepreneurial mindset so like i had said the, the mindset piece is not necessarily an obvious output of building a personal brand this is more specific to my program however when you are building a personal brand and you're consistently creating content and you're adding value, you're putting yourself out there, it's 
sort of pushing you to grow and to, you know, put yourself in uncomfortable situations and be vulnerable. And that will naturally help you build your confidence and help you kind of strengthen your mindset, especially when you start to get messages from your audience and opportunities. A lot of the people that are finding themselves stuck, they might be in that situation where maybe they've been looking for clients or jobs for so long and they're not getting a lot of traction. But when you start building a personal brand and you start getting these opportunities, you get the messages, you will get more confident from that. You will, you will have a stronger mindset from that. But again, the, the biggest mindset piece that I've really integrated into mine, which is not inherently a part of a personal branding process is really this like laying the foundation piece, which is again, like what are my limiting beliefs? What are my fears? What's my why? And then working to reprogram that with subconscious reprogramming techniques, mindset techniques like meditation, journaling, all sorts of things like that. But yeah, again, that's not inherently a personal branding thing, but it does come in other ways as well. I think it's so interesting that you integrate the mindset piece into it because I feel like so many people just say like, okay, I'm going to start a YouTube channel or okay, I'm going to start a TikTok and they just like dive into it without like really being sure of themselves or like really like they the first time they have a viral video, like, you know, game over, trolls come in and like, there goes your confidence. Like, whoop, like that was fun while it lasted. Like people like burn out super quickly, right? So like, I think it's so interesting that you're integrating that piece almost as like the foundation, like before you even get into the actual content creation and like the putting yourself out there part, because it's, it's, it makes so much sense, but it's, it's a step that so many people skip. Yeah, it's it's something that if I hadn't done that for myself and with my clients, you don't you won't have the longevity in terms of, you know, consistently showing up and being able to invest because like for example, with the with the laying the foundation, one of the lessons is finding your why, identifying your motivator, getting clear on what is it that really is that sh- going to generate a strong, positive, emotional response within you that is going to give you that motivating force. So for me, it was getting more freedom and autonomy and just all of those things that were super important to me. And so finding your why is a really great way to do that as well. You know what I think is interesting, Meg, is I had like the opposite thought of what you just said. And we did an episode last week about like all mindset questions. And I feel like personal branding kind of forces you to tackle some of those issues. Like we we have questions like, oh, I don't want to show up. I don't want to show my face on social media or, you know, imposter syndrome stuff. And you just kind of like when you're doing it as a personal brand, you just kind of jump in and deal with all that stuff right away. Yeah, it's it's a very confronting thing at the beginning, especially if you're not mentally preparing yourself for it. And so if you're not mentally preparing yourself for it, you're not aware that this is a natural sort of result of content creation, it can maybe impact you in the opposite way. But I think for most of us, that can that makes us stronger. But that's not the case for everyone, obviously. But that's why it's, it's important bef- before I even begin building a personal brand or starting to build a strategy with my clients, we spend so much time on, on that mindset piece. Because like I said, if you are putting yourself out there or being vulnerable, you've probably never done anything like this before. You've probably never kind of gone out on a limb, especially with the fear of judgment from our friends and our family and the people from high school. Like that's a big one that that was a bot that was that would bother me in the beginning, but I, I don't care at all anymore. But again, it's like if you stick with it and you force yourself to go outside your comfort zone, that will help you. But it's kind of like a make or breaker, I think. So I understand how you could see it from both. I love that so much. I'm curious what advice you would give to people if they are feeling ridiculously burnt out at their jobs, but they they feel like they need to keep pushing and they need to just keep enduring. Like, I know you've been there. So like any tips on like, if somebody's feeling that way, like what should they do? Yeah, so I actually had someone on about burnout on the, on the Project Unstuck and I learned a lot lot from her. But the number one thing that I always say to start with is first looking at your to-do list, looking at all your obligations, both in your personal life and your professional life, and see what can I take off my list? What can I cut off? We very rarely will remove things. We're always adding, we're always adding. But like, if you're feeling burnt out, you you need to start, start to create a little bit of energetic space for yourself, just time, right? So first clear things off your plate, look at your list of things and see what am I, what am I doing that is not really contributing to the majority of my results. You can almost apply the 80-20 rule. What are the 20% items or inputs or efforts that I'm making that are contributing to the majority of my results, the 80% of my results? Everything else, can I either delegate that to someone else? Can I delete it entirely? Can I delay it? 
And so first is getting getting some things off your plate, number one. Number two, and this is related, and this is again something I learned from Dr. Morgan Levy, is people that are perfectionists are much more likely to end up burnt out because there's they're, they're never it's never enough, right? So they always wanna keep pushing. And so when you can try to separate yourself from the perfectionist tendencies as best you can, that will help. And so this could look like looking at your life and saying, where am I putting way more effort in than I need to? Where can I kind of dial back? So maybe your house doesn't need to look like a stage home all the time. Maybe it can just be good enough. So look for the areas in your life where it can be good enough. And the last thing I would say is, again, something I learned from Dr. Levy, you really should try and take a 20 minute intentional rest break for every 90 minutes of work. So research shows that that really is a great way to combat uh, burnout, but it needs to be something that is intentionally restful. So this could be a meditation, this could be a walk. It's not scrolling on TikTok. It's something that, you know, feels feels good. And then the other thing I'll say is if you are trying to look for ways to manage burnout in your personal life, of course, get as much rest as you can. That might seem obvious, but that's a big that's a big factor. But another thing is, do you have a personal life that is meaningful to you? Do you have a so do you have social connections that are meaningful to you? If you don't have that social support, that can make your burnout worse. So looking for ways to build that community into your life if you don't already have it can help a lot. And so if you don't have that community, you don't have those relationships or those hobbies that that give you that sense of meaning, then see if you can join, you know, different containers of people that are in a similar boat or that can kind of share, you know, valuable advice. So maybe that's a Reddit form, maybe it's a Facebook group, maybe it's a mastermind, maybe it's a group coaching program, but that can help as well. So if you could go back to when you were just starting your business, what's one piece of advice you'd give yourself? Gosh, there's like so many. <laughs> trying to think of one. I just heard this TikTok sound in my head that you got, Megan, you might, you might be familiar with it. It's like reduce your expectations to zero. <laughs> so like in the beginning, I would say go easy on yourself, reduce your expectations. It's it's not easy to start selling when you've never sold anything before. And I never, I was never that entrepreneurial kid that like had the lemonade stand and, you know, like bought candy at the dollar store and flipped it. Like you hear that from a lot of entrepreneurs. And I was like, that was never me. So reduce your expectations around what you expect to produce in your business. Number one, the sales, but also more of a sales tip for myself is you need to believe in what you're selling. If you don't believe in what you're selling and you don't have a clear message and you don't have a clear view of who you're trying to help and how, even as a marketer, this was not something I got super clear on right away. I'm great at doing this for my clients, but when it came to doing it for myself, I didn't necessarily go through all the due diligence that I could have in the beginning of getting really clear on my messaging and my positioning. And so, yeah, figuring out, you know, a clear audience, a clear message, a clear positioning, but also understand how it helps and do you believe in it? Because if you don't believe in it, you're going to have a really hard time selling anything. Oh, that's so, so true. I love that. Do you have any projects that you're working on right now that you're super excited about that you are allowed to share? Project Unstuck is really the thing I'm most excited about right now. And that's really just a free video series that I created where I'm helping people get unstuck, develop their personal brands and strengthen their mindset. And I'm just interviewing different people that have both got unstuck and learned from them. I, I call them the unstuck guides. And then I'm also interviewing sort of experts in different fields. So like I had mentioned, Dr. Morgan Levy, she's an expert in burnout, perfectionism. I'm going to interview someone tomorrow that's all about mindset. And so that's really where I'm passionate and I'm not charging anything for it. I just really want to start to pressure test some of my methods and ideas around this because while I've seen this work for myself and my clients and a lot of my followers, I still kind of want to gain more feedback from my audience and see like, does this really hold water for every different kind of person, for a B2B person, a B2C, you know, a person in a nine to five, et cetera. And so I'm just really excited about that, creating that content because like I said, it just, it really, yeah, just feeds my soul. It makes, it makes me feel like I have a sense of purpose. Awesome. And where can we find Project Unstuck and where can we find you online? So you can just go to stephpinsley.com forward slash hello, S-T-E-F, P-I-N-S-L-E-Y. Most people think it's P-H. That's where you can subscribe to Project Unstuck. And then if you want to follow me, it's just Steph. Dot Pinsley. Awesome. We'll put links to all that too in the show notes. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Steph. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. And thank you to our listeners for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Until next time, stay sparkly.